Okay, if you are someone who does presentations in Zoom and you're trying to make them look more professional, did you know that using a second device to bring in your slides could actually make your life easier? Now, I know that this actually seems counterproductive, but I'm going to talk today about why I like to use a second device for bringing my slides into a presentation. And I've got quite the little setup here. Make It's a little nervous that I'm doing this live because we've got so many things going on, but I do want to show you your different options and explain not only why you would do this, but how you would do this. So today is all about bringing in your slides from a second device. And that can be from a computer, a phone, a tablet, you have options and we are going to talk about all of these options. Now, if you are brand new and do not know me, I am Kat and I help people to create more professional and engaging online presentations. And it's so great to see some of you here with me live. I'm so glad you could join. And I also wanna say, if you are on this channel, I think there's a really good chance that you are interested in taking your presentations to the next level. And if that is the case, I wanna make sure that you know that I have an Elevate Your Online Presentations training. So I've got the link in the description below if you wanna check out more about that. But let's get to today's main topic, which is all about how you can use a second device, bring that in, and why it actually, it seems counterintuitive, but it actually makes your life a little bit easier. And I'll actually, I've got my webcam today. I'm going to turn things around and actually show you my setup. But first, let's talk about why you would want to do this. And for those of you who are here today in the chat, I would love to hear from you if you do this. Do you use a second device to bring in slides or maybe another part of the screen that you want to share? I'd love to hear from those of you who are here. All right. Why? Why would we do this? It sounds like it's complicated, but in actual fact, it can help things run more smoothly. So one of the reasons that you might do this is because you want to share the processing load on your computer. For example, if you think about running a presentation on Zoom and you are trying to make it look really good, so you're using a streaming software, maybe Ecamm Live, OBS, vMix, etc. So you've got yourself and you've got your slides, for example, it could look like this. This is a sample slide that I have coming in from a computer. So that looks really good and it stands out. And when you are running Zoom, you're running your streaming software, and then you've got your slides running, all of that starts to take a toll on your device. And so maybe the fan is kicking in really quickly. So by bringing in a second device, you can actually start to alleviate some of the load on your main computer that is streaming out to your Zoom meeting. So that's one of the principal things that I love about this is that it shares the load. Now, the other thing that's actually really nice is from a control standpoint, right now I have my Stream Deck, which I love so much, that is controlling my production. So what you see on the screen, the fact that I can kind of flip between these different scenes. But then with my left hand, I am able to progress the slides. So I can say next slide, whatnot, with two different hands. And so I don't get mixed up and accidentally go forward in a scene when I meant to go forward in a slide. So that's another plus to this. Also, if you are working with one monitor, and I am not, but there was a time when I was just working from my MacBook Pro and I had one monitor. And if you are trying to do all of these things on one device where you only have one monitor, it's really nice to have the option to bring in slides from a secondary device so that you can use your main computer and that main monitor to control your Zoom call, to control your production software. And then that way you're just spreading it out. And so you don't have all of this screen real estate being taken up by all of the things that you're doing and multitasking. Now, the other thing that you might want to consider is that it's actually, if you are using a streaming software, it makes it really easy to position your slides. So you have a little bit more control because they're coming in like a camera source. And so you can just shape and size that camera source and you can have different options. For example, when I'm running a workshop, I will have a picture in picture with my slides, but let's say I have a slide. So this is from one of my actual <laughs> workshops. I have a slide like this and that's actually kind of small to see. And sometimes I really want people to focus. So I'm going to change to this view. And so now I have a different view of how you can see that information. And let's say I really want to bring home a point. I can just go 
back to this slide and then all of a sudden I am talking to the audience again. And so it allows you to have these two different setups because this positioning of the slides is different than this positioning of the slides. And when you are first learning how to set that up, this can be really frustrating. I know this caused me a lot of headaches to try to figure out how do I have, if it's on one of my screens or if I've got it on my monitor, how do I get it to show up in two different sizes? And so that's something that's also extremely helpful. So those are some of the reasons. There might be more. Let me know in the comments or the chat if anyone else has other reasons why you would want to use a secondary device. For, and we're talking about slides. This also applies to other things as well. I'm just going to take a look and see if anyone else has done this before. So if David says, I don't usually do it. Um, Kombucha, I have not had presentations yet, but plan on doing a game show and we'll integrate Keynote. Yeah, and Keynote for us Mac users, when that's running, that's a it's it takes up a lot. Like you can hear your computer chugging along. So if you have a way to have Keynote on another computer, same goes for PowerPoint, etc. And uh, Rich, thank you for <laughs> the compliment. Yes, I got my hair cut last week to celebrate one year of no dye in my hair. So thank you very much for this. And Steve, never done this and want to learn. Great. There's okay. This is excellent. So. Let's talk a little bit about bringing in, how do you actually do it and what are you doing? So let's just first think about this, what we are doing and this main computer, it could be a laptop, it could be a desktop, it doesn't really matter. But the concept is that you are bringing in either your phone, your tablet or another computer. And it's also important to know that this computer doesn't actually have to be the same type. So for example, on a previous training on how to present your slides in a window, I actually showed you my Dell laptop because I do have a PC as well. So I connected that device to my main computer, which happens to be an iMac, and I was able to do a demonstration by connecting those two computers. So they do not have to be the same. Maybe you were thinking, oh, well, I have a second computer in the house, but they're not compatible. Well, they can be because of the technology you use. You're actually bringing it in more like a camera instead of connecting them as if they have to talk to one another. So that is a really important thing to know. And if you saw that video, then you will have seen that I was able to easily bring in an image of everything that was on the screen for my PC. So when it comes to this, there are a few different options. So let's run through some of the ways that you can connect a second device. So the first, is cables. This works best for phones and for tablets. For example, this is not currently hooked up, but I have here a, this is a USB-C to a lightning. Can we do that? There we go. So this is one that I use regularly when I want to connect my tablet or my phone. I also happen to have a, a different one, which is a lightning to USB right now. So you can see, nope. <laughs> Now you can see that I have my iPad connected for it's lightning and USB. And you know what? A lot of us have those already. They come with chargers. You can plug that into your device and then you'll be able to have the image show up for the most part. You might have to download a software update. So using straightforward cables is definitely an option for doing this. Okay. What else? You can actually do this wirelessly and I have an example. So right now I have the same slides on my phone. So you are going to see an example. The font is not updated. That's a drawback. So we'll talk about that. Um, I, my font I use on my computer is not one that I have downloaded onto my phone. That is something that you can fix and work around, but you can do a wireless option. And usually for this, you would need some sort of integration. Right now I am using an app that is called NDI HX Capture. What that does is it captures everything that is on my device. I have this both on my phone and my iPad. I have that linked below if you're interested in that technology. And then once I've got this shared and I can go into a demo later, it will show up as a camera source in Ecamm. So I can just pick that and add that to my production. Okay, what's another way? A capture card. So you can actually use an HDMI cable and a capture card to connect two devices. So your secondary device is coming in like a camera. Now, if you're not familiar with a capture card, this is often used with mirrorless cameras or if someone has a dig 
DSLR camera that they are using as a webcam. In order to get this clean HDMI and this clean output, like right now, I have a Sony mirrorless camera. It's the ZV-1 and it is connected to my computer using a capture card. Now this camera does not actually need one anymore, but that's besides the point. A capture card is able to bring in that image. And this is something, so I have two capture cards, one for my camera, the one I'm using right now, my Sony. And then I have a capture card that I can use to connect my laptop with my slides. Now I'm not actually using that right now. I am using a different technology at the moment to connect my slides that you saw already. So that is where I'm actually using the internet. And in particular right now, I am hardwired using ethernet cables. And so right here, you're going to see an example, which is what I have set up and I'm, I can give you a little tour. So this is where you would have your modem is connected to a switch. So you have an ethernet switch and this switch has multiple ports. Mine happens to have eight, eight ports. I've got mine linked below. And this is where you can put an ethernet cable from the internet into the switch. And then you have an ethernet cable that goes from your switch to your main computer and a cable to your laptop. So this is one way that you can hardwire. And that's actually right now how you saw my slides is that I've got this connected. Now, I, because this is new for many people, I do want to explain a little bit more. And before I do, I'm just gonna check in the chat here to make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh, hi, Sammy, thanks for joining. Um, let's see. Okay, so David says, I will be doing this soon. Great. Okay, so, and then Larry says, I usually use a second screen with Keynote and a Stream Deck. Awesome, that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about NDI, which is actually what I am using with these ethernet cables. So I have an NDI software installed on my iMac, which is my primary computer, and then also on my laptop, actually on both laptops, and my PC and my MacBook Pro. So what I'm doing is I'm running a software that makes my computer show up like a camera source. So this will connect devices that are on the same network and actually right now my phone, as I mentioned, right now this is not wired, but I am using the same network and it is using NDI technology. So it stands for Network Device Interface, but just saying those words usually does not clear up any of the confusion about what is NDI, but it allows everything to be networked together. And what it does, and they're wired and wireless, I think of it, a metaphor is like having a bunch of camera inputs. So whatever device it is that is on this NDI, that's on the network, they can basically show up on your primary computer or vice versa as a camera source. So you're getting an input and then you can resize and shape that camera source. So right now, when I go in to add my slides, it's like I'm adding a camera and it's just showing me whatever is either on my screen or what I have chosen to show on that source. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, a couple other things is that you can also use NDI technology within one device. It doesn't have to be shared across multiple devices. For example, if you have one computer, you can actually run an NDI software that makes maybe an application on your computer show up like a camera source. So if I say have a browser, I can use the NDI software to make a browser show up like a camera. And then I just add the camera overlay and I can size and shape that. So there are options for that. This is not what today's is about. I, I can do a second video that is specific to using NDI on the same computer. Right now though, we're talking about how we can bring in a second device. So, but I do want to just at least say that that is also a thing. There are reasons you might want that. Similarly, you can actually bring in, for example, an animation or a video file directly from Adobe. For example, Adobe Premiere, if you've created a video, you can bring that in to say Ecamm as an overlay, an animated overlay without having to render it, which I think is actually pretty cool. <laughs> and I see um, Edward saying, I couldn't get Skype NDI to work with OBS, kept freezing. Okay, I'd have to do a little bit of looking into that. I was playing around today with NDI and OBS, but because OBS actually has the application capture, I feel like you don't necessarily need it on the same device. As far as secondary devices, that might take a little bit more research on my part. 
Now, the actual NDI setup that I am using right now is that on my primary computer, I am running what, or first to set it up, you have to open your access manager. So that is one of the tools that comes in the download kit. So I have in the description, I have a link to the new tech NDI tools. Those are free to download the phone app. It, I think there's a charge, but if you go to the NDI tools site, you are, it's free to download. When you download it, you're going to see a bunch of names <laughs> and there's only two that you need to worry about. The first one is the access manager, and this is a way to just add a remote source. And so what you do is you open the access manager, you click on remote source, and then you enter the IP address of your secondary device. Once you've got that on, as long as they're on the same network, it's now going to show up as a source. Then on your second device, like my laptop right now, you open the NDI scan converter, you click file, and then you select. Do you want it just to show the desktop? Do you want it to show one application on that computer? You can do that. And once that's selected, when I open, for example, Ecamm, I'm going to see this as an option. And I can kind of flip that around and show you what that looks like. So that is the different, those are the different options for how you can add a secondary device. So now let's show you actually an example of the iPhone. So if I flip, this is my picture in picture. And as I mentioned, the slide font is a little different. You'll also notice that the resolution is not quite as strong as when I'm using a laptop. So I personally prefer to use the laptop, but this is an option. Now I also have a, I've got my iPad hooked up and actually let's show you, I'm gonna show you my screen. Um, so let's do a demo mode for Ecamm. So if I change my live demo mode, it's probably gonna be a little small because of the resolution right now on my iMac. Um, but you can see that there are a lot of cameras right here. And maybe this is too small, but if I click the edit button right now, I can actually see which camera. And I've got the iPhone sharing the slides. But when I change this, I could also pick my iPad or my MacBook. And so you can just flip between the different camera options. Now, if I pick my iPad, which is just connected with the cable, one of the challenges is that the, I'm not using the newest Ecamm beta, which allows you to kind of go oversize. So right now I would want to be using the new <laughs> Ecamm version, or I would want to resize my PIP. And actually you can edit the aspect. So I could say, let's make it a classic one, which makes it a little bit better. But then when I try to drag this corner, I can't fully make it because I'm not using <laughs> the new Ecamm beta. But as you can see, if I just have a slightly smaller pip, the picture in picture window, then I would be able to resize that properly. So I do apologize if this is way too tiny for any of you to see. I'm gonna turn off live demo mode. And I'm actually going to flip around a little bit and give you a perspective this way. The other thing I do wanna show, because I think I can show it um, on the camera, is that I am not using the capture card right now, but if I were, this is what would go into my laptop. So I have an HDMI cable that's connected to the capture card, which you will see in a moment. And then I have a media adapter. This is an Apple media adapter, which I do, it's more expensive, but I tried using a third party adapter and it was not reliable. And so I did go with getting an actual Apple multimedia adapter. So this allows me to have HDMI plugged in. And so then you have that, that clear picture. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this around. I'm gonna do this live. Hopefully um, I don't get too quiet depending on my proximity to the microphone, but let's do this. Okay, I'm gonna move that and I'm gonna flip the camera. So let's do this. So many cameras to pick from. Okay, so this is, I've got just like a little webcam <laughs> and it's blurry, of course. Okay, let's look down and see if it adjusts. You gonna adjust? Can't, let's maybe focus. Okay, there's my stream deck. It's really, yeah, it's not, not that helpful, but you can see right now I've got my phone with Keynote, which is my slides right now. I have another example of having my iPad 
with the slides showing. And as you can see, just because of the shape of my specific, I have an iPad mini. And so the aspect ratio of the slides is different than the aspect ratio for the, the actual display, which is why I have those black bars when I'm trying to share. Let's angle this better. And over here, I've got my MacBook Pro. So as you can maybe see on the side here, uh, <laughs> you can see all of my the stuff I hide. But here I've got the ethernet cable. And let's go actually under the desk. And sorry if it gets quiet, but if we go under the desk, you'll see here, this is where I keep my spare mouse trackpad. I've got a spare keyboard, but over in the distance, you can actually see this is a capture card. So that is the HD 60S Plus, which is a capture card you can use. So that is how I connect my laptop. And then I also, this is my switch. So that is my eight port um, ethernet switch. So I have my internet coming in directly from the modem with a hundred foot cable because it's on a different floor. And then I also have um, different color coded ones. So one is going to my computer, one of my main computer, one is going to my secondary computer. The white one is for my MacBook Pro. And then the blue one is for my PC. So that is kind of the network that I have. These are my two different options, the capture card as well as the ethernet cables. So that's a little sneak peek. And then this is what I'm seeing right now. Got my teleprompter that has my Ecamm output so I can see exactly what is going out to you. I've got my live stream and then I have my Ecamm. And then of course, Notion. It wouldn't be, <laughs> it wouldn't be the same if I didn't have Notion open. So that is a little behind the scenes tour of how I have this set up. Now, one of the things I wanna say about the NDI setup is that it sounds complicated, but it's really not complicated and it is cost effective. So buying a switch, the one that I have, it's around $22 US, it's around $29 Canadian, and then you have ethernet cables. I personally like having the different colors so I know exactly which cable is which. Now I did have to have an adapter in order to plug it in to actually both my PC and my MacBook are both required to have an adapter for the ethernet cable. But one of the things I like about this is that my main computer, it uses the ethernet port, which I was already doing because I do recommend you be hardwired to your modem and it doesn't take up one of the other ports. And so it's a nice option for connecting a second device without taking up another port. Because as anyone knows, if you once you've got a few things hooked up, if you've got a camera, if you have a few other things running in there, you're gonna run out of those. So it's actually really nice to have a cost-effective way to bring in a second device and you don't have to use up all of your ports. So I think that's awesome. The other thing I'll say is that I do prefer wired over the wireless option. So I know right now I said I'm using the NDI HX capture on my phone. I also have it on my iPad, but that is one of those things where that signal could drop. So being wired is always a better option. I'm just gonna look down. Yes, Eileen, dongles for days. <laughs> You're not wrong. So many, <laughs> so many things kind of hidden under there. Um, so Edward says, what NDI software are you, you, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Why is that coming up? What are you using with the Mac? Okay, so the NDI software that I'm using, it's from NewTek and I have it in the description. So when you go to the new tech site, there's an option to download the NDI tools. So that is what I have downloaded both on my primary computer and on my secondary computer. That's if you're connecting to computers. And so once you download the tools, there are a bunch to choose from, but the two that got me set up and the only two that I really need are the access manager to make sure I bring in those remote sources to my primary computer by using the IP address and the scan converter. And so the scan converter is what I'm running right now on my MacBook Pro. So the only thing I have on my MacBook Pro right now running is my keynote in presentation mode and my scan converter, which is showing my entire desktop. And actually what I can do, let's switch over to this because what I can do is actually show you because it's showing my entire desktop, I'm going to exit this for a second and then, oh, it's kind of hard to see here, but if at the bottom, 
If I click on scan converter, oh, it's cutting it off. At the top of scan converter, you can kind of see the menu a little bit, but under file, anything that is on here, so the very top that is cut off right now is desktop, but you can also see I could pick Keynote separately. Also Finder is apparently open as is backup and sync. But if I had an application open, I could just go and I could pick that and then that would show up. Right now I have it set to desktop, which is cut off so that when I play this presentation, then that is all you see. It's showing the entire desktop screen from my computer. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, oh yes, yeah, Eileen, sometimes it shows the wrong comment. Let's try and show. That's the correct comment. That's the one that I wanted to show. <laughs> um, so are there any other questions that you have about bringing in a second device? I guess my advice would always be if you use, if you are using a tablet or phone, make sure that it is charged. Sometimes when you connect to the device, like if, if I've right now, I've got my iPad connected using a lightning to USB, it's not charging it. So I wanted to make sure that my tablet was charged in advance. Same with your phone. You just make sure that anything you are using is charged or plugged in while you are using it. The other thing is that you, the font, as you saw <laughs> with an example, that it does, I don't have the fonts downloaded onto these devices. So you would either want to choose a presentation where that doesn't matter, that you're using those primary fonts that are on your phone, or you could maybe have it in a different format. Maybe you have PDF slides or something else so that you get the font and the look that you are looking for. Um, I see Larry here says, great tip on incorporating the switch, having power, two cameras, stream deck, focus right, Scarlet, yeah, the, the interface and external monitor. Yes, port scarcity, it's a thing. <laughs> and so that switch is a really nice option for just using the ethernet cable and it's really affordable. Capture cards, so a note on capture cards. I have the Camlink 4K and the HD 60S Plus. And those are both expensive. Those were investments. There are less expensive capture cards out there, but you want to practice caution if you are using a cheaper card, um, but do the reviews. You might be able to get a cheaper capture card. It is definitely a simple connection because all you do is plug it in and it should show up. But that is one of those things where you have to kind of weigh how much does it cost? Is it taking up another port? If you've got all of these things, um, together, then you want to catch, watch for that. Um, and yeah, Eileen masterclass on NDI, the, the NDI, I'm sure they're lovely people, but their descriptions of what their programs do, not helpful, not at all. I, I read those, I've read those descriptions many times and I cannot, I, I, it was kind of almost a fluke that I actually figured out connect the access manager and then the scan converter. And also the access manager you only do once. And the cool thing about when you've networked the computer, so because my MacBook Pro is networked using NDI through the access manager that I mentioned, it actually will show up wirelessly. I don't have to be plugged in by to the switch. It will actually just show up. There's just a very slight lag, but for slides, as long as you give it a second, they'll show up. But that is something that you should know about. And I'm seeing um, Rich is asking, oh, that, that's the wrong one. <laughs> David loves dongles. But Rich is asking, is your Stream Deck connected to the network? So my Stream Deck is just connected by USB directly into my iMac. And so it's only controlling what's on my iMac. Um, so that is one, I guess, slight drawback. But I actually like doing like Stream Deck with this hand and then advancing slides with this hand. The other thing is because I'm a presenter, I do have a little clicker. So I can also have a clicker set up with my device as well. With So that can help. And there's another little trick that I'll do a separate video on. And that is how to use the Keynote, if you are a Mac user, using the Keynote remote, which you can use your iPad or your, your phone to actually um, manage your presentation by advancing it and going back, but you can also see your presenter notes as well as the next slide coming up. Because sometimes when you got all this stuff going on or you're using a presentation window, you can't see your next slide. So that is a great option and I will be creating a secondary video on that. Okay, I wanna make sure, I'm gonna be wrapping up, but I wanna make sure there are no more questions. Thank you all so much for coming and hanging out with me today, talking about this secondary device. If you liked it, I would love if you could give it a like. And if you are not already subscribed, then you are interested in this content, make sure you do so that 
you can come back and you can learn how to create more professional and engaging online presentations.